Welcome to Friday, October 22nd, 2021. Leftovers. What does he mean by that? Well, for most of the Intermountain West and the Western High Plains, we're going to be getting what's left of some stormy West Coast weather. What that means is it's generally going to be mild. We are going to have a lot of high and mid-level clouds this weekend. We're going to have a lot of sun today, but expect a lot of high and mid-level clouds this weekend as moisture from the West Coast storms come in. We're also going to have some breezy areas, but all in all, it really isn't going to be that bad of a weekend. We do have a quick moving front or the leftovers of the first storm moving through the Intermountain West Saturday late into early Sunday. That'll produce a little bit of snow in the mountains, a few rain or snow showers in the plains. But since these are Pacific systems, they don't have a lot of cold air with them. So temperatures aren't going to drop much. Another system, basically the leftovers of the next West Coast storm will come into the Intermountain West sometime in the Monday, Tuesday time frame, mainly late Monday into early Tuesday. That'll produce mountain snow, rain and snow showers on the plains and some cooler weather. But again, not going to be a big weather system for areas along and east of the divide. And also, we had talked in earlier podcasts about maybe something coming for Halloween weekend. Well, right now at least, and this is something we'll look at again on Monday. But I do think we have a frontal system in the area this coming weekend, Halloween weekend, but it doesn't look as scary as it did earlier. But that'll be something we'll update you again early next week. Well, today's weather song, we went deep, 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 deep into the music library here at Day Weather to pull out today's weather song, but I think it's very appropriate. That's right, it never rains in Southern California. Albert Hammond, now there is a uh, definite trivia question that'll come up later, who wrote that song? I don't know how many of you remember Albert Hammond, Probably just because of that song. But it's a great song, really is. And it's apropos to what's going on in the West Coast here over the next few days. And this is why. Today we've got a pretty good cold front coming in. And we're going to see this system move very quickly through the Pacific Northwest and then into the Rockies by late Saturday and into Saturday night and Sunday morning. So it's going to cover a lot of tracks quickly. And we showed you why yesterday and the day before because of these really intense jet stream winds. This is the first system. The second system is going to break off of the main low here and come in behind it late Sunday into Monday. This is Saturday afternoon, so you can see how quickly that system pushes into the Rockies. As it does so, it is going to be bringing in some cooler weather. But quickly behind it, there's the next wave. This one is stronger. This is going to come in late Sunday into Monday into the same areas that are getting the first wave. And this wave will traverse the Rockies and High Plains. But the mountain ranges, if you were to look at a map and see how many mountain ranges go from here, then make it into here before we get to the Cottonelle Divide, these storms, when they form like this with these strong jet stream winds, you just lose moisture as they translate eastward. So basically, along and east of the divide here, you just get the leftovers, clouds, wind, and a few showers. However, this is a really good pattern for the mountains to pick up precipitation. We've been showing you this week these really strong jet stream winds, and this is for Sunday morning with the next wave. Right here, we've got jet stream winds that could be going in excess of 200 miles an hour or more. So just imagine getting that tailwind if you're eastbound on a flight across the Pacific. Just a really, really intense jet stream wind and I think a sign of what's coming for the rest of the fall season for parts of the northwestern United States. Over the next seven days, looking at very impressive moisture, as we showed you yesterday, you get a gradient. The further east you go away from the coast, the lesser amounts of moisture. But there is going to be some showers across the Dakotas, across areas along and east of the divide. Mainly, I think most of this comes with the second system. But some of this will occur with the Saturday night, Sunday. But this is impressive. You get into Idaho, you get into far western Wyoming, the Wasatch of Utah, the northern Great Basin, and all of California. And even in the rain shadow east of the Cascades here, there's going to be some decent amounts of rain and a really good shot of snow. That's right. You're seeing seven and a half inches there in the north central Sierras of water equivalent. They haven't seen that much rain in a long, long time. Snowfall wise, pretty impressive snowfall amounts. When we talked about the snowpack yesterday getting an early start, this is going to add to it. Now in the central and northern Rockies here, the snow levels are going to be pretty high, but the higher 
areas above tree line are going to add to the snow totals and probably keep that snow with these two fronts going on through. And yes, you saw that correctly. That's a prediction of four feet of snow in the north central Sierras over the next seven days. It's probably overdoing it, uh, but it's actually not unreasonable based on those jet stream winds and how much moisture is getting driven in. Now, I want to quickly touch in on the latest drought monitor, and there's good news. There actually is good news. It's little bits of good news, but we'll take every bit of good news we can get. In the past week, these green areas show where there has been improvement in drought conditions. So there's a good chunk of the Dakotas, northeastern Wyoming, parts of the northern Panhandle, even west and southwestern Wyoming, that have seen improvement in drought conditions. It doesn't mean it's over the drought. It just means that it didn't get worse. It actually got better. And if we were to go and look up in the southeast Montana, the same there. Now, it'll be this area right here that gets their turn to show drought improvement with the next update late next week with what's coming in now. Now, going out further, as we talked about, 10 days out for Halloween weekend. This is for Sunday afternoon or Halloween afternoon on Sunday. We do have a potential for a cold front to come in and another low moving in the Northern California. So this may create a little bit of weather Halloween weekend, mainly in that Sunday, Halloween day time frame into the first day of November. But we got to sort that out. But at the same time, it doesn't look like we're going to have a big four corner storm or anything like that at this point in time. We'll update you on Monday. Here is the latest smoke map for North America. Notice something missing from the smoke map. That would be correct. That is right. There is no smoke. Uh, really, we are probably putting the fire season to bed with the last two storms and certainly the stormy weather that's going over the fire areas right now. And if we were to review the fire season so far, I think you may find some of this data a little surprising. 2021 was a little bit more in terms of the number of fires reported compared to 2020. But I want you to pay really close attention to these bar graphs. 2021, two bad years. Also, we were in a La Nina. We'll make that with an L. The last fire seasons that were bad were also La Nina years, 2017 and 18. But also, you know, this, these are the two years where we had the strongest, uh, strongest connection between what we've had this year to what we had then. So notice what will happen here. 2013 and 2014, El Ninos, strong El Nino. In fact, one of the wettest years in North America happened in 2019. There is a correlation between the really bad fire seasons and El Nino and La Nina, again, to make another connection to what happens in the oceans, to what happens with the climate in the Western United States. And one problem you get when you have wet years like 2019, what happens? You have explosive growth in shrubs, weeds, and grasses. And if you follow those strong wet seasons, those strong El Ninos with a La Nina, you dry out, then you burn more acreage. But when it comes to the acreage burning, this year actually the number of acres is down from 2020. But if you look right here, you can really see what it was like in 2011 and 2012. And to my point, when you go from a wet season to a La Nina, 2019 to 2020, 2021, the acres burn go up because of the growth that happens in the rains and then the dryness. Same situation right here, same situation right here. So it should really be no surprise when we go through these active fire periods, what happens with the La Ninas and the El Ninos and the way the drought conditions and the wet conditions work in the Western United States. There are patterns that definitely show up. And here's a graph you're not going to see really anywhere else, but a study going back to 1600 on incidents of wildfires in North America, you can see that what we've been experiencing over the last 100 years of fire activity is nowhere like what happened in the preceding historical times before then. So there is some talk that what we're experiencing here over the last 10, 20 or 30 years is historical. Well, it might be over the last 20 or 30 or 40 years, but going back to 1600, it's not. Have yourself a great Friday. Have yourself a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday.